In the year 2800, astronauts Adam and Jake head to the planet Antares, seeking refuge for Earth's barren women due to a deadly virus. Hindered by communication issues and a mysterious gravitational pull, they face uncertainty on a mission to save humanity. As the spaceship descends, their journey unfolds with suspense, ethical dilemmas, and the hope for a new beginning. Too quickly are they losing altitude. Even though Adam and Jake make every effort to take back control of the ship, they are only partially successful, and the craft ultimately crashes onto the planet's surface. Jake is the most severely injured, with a big chunk of shrapnel passing through his shoulder, while Adam only receives minor wounds. Before the smoke within the spacecraft suffocates them, Adam rushes to his aid. When they step outside the spacecraft, they find Antares to be a desolate wasteland devoid of any vegetation, with massive rock formations all around. Adam tends to Jake's injuries in the interim, reminding him that he is a pilot and not a doctor. He also gives him an injection using a futuristic syringe that instantly puts him to sleep. He quickly extracts the shrapnel and gives Jake gauze to gnaw on. Joking that it must be a planet of dogs, Jake points to a dog. Adam brushes it off as he doesn't see anything and notes that Jake is high, but he promises to look into it. Suddenly, while they are talking, they hear a dog barking. They had thought that life on the planet was only a myth up until this point, but Adam begins to follow the sound as they get more motivated. After some exploring, he finds a young, uncivilized child holding the aforementioned dog and wearing an anxious expression. When Adam tries to approach, the terrified child yanks a dagger at him, warns that the snakeheads are close, and takes off running. Sadly, he is taken prisoner by the S snakeheads, who seem to be women dressed in rudimentary military garb, after a short while. The youngster is running late for the sacrifice, one of them remarks. As his dog flees, they swiftly disarm him, knock the young child unconscious, and take him into custody. Using his high-tech watch communicator, he makes an instant call to Jake, who informs him that the magnitude of the earthquake was 6.2. Adam requests that he perform a geoscan of the region and respond to him. Adam soon travels farther into the area and finds a huge structure that resembles a temple. He enters surreptitiously and is shocked to see a large group of women encircling a stop. As their queen Samuru enters, the women chant Samuru quietly. A woman by the name of Taxon declares aloud that their blood offering is to be accepted by the all-powerful serpent mother. At that moment, a massive cobra emerges from the hole, resembling a big serpent. The planet Antares Queen Samuru then appears unimpressed with the cult's output. When the serpent is ready to eat, Taxon then calls for them to bring out their offering. When Taxon's troops carry the veiled sacrifice into the chamber, they identify him as the young child from before. Upon witnessing this, the boy's sister Dove, a soldier for the queen, engages in combat with a member of Taxon's cult in an attempt to release her brother. Dove fights the woman alone as everyone looks on, pushing her into the pit. Abruptly, the serpent lord descends and devours a member of the cult. Taxon, furious, gives her women orders to apprehend Dove, but the queen forbids them, saying it's necessary for self-defense. Within the temple, women are divided. One serves Taxon, while the other is obedient to the queen. The two leaders are on the verge of starting their own disagreement. Everyone in the room is alerted when Jake calls Adam, who has been hidden in a corner the entire time. Taxon gives her soldiers the command to pursue him right away. However, Adam diverts attention with one of his blasters and runs away. Will, the younger brother, is given the command to flee by Dove during the commotion, and he succeeds in getting out of the temple. Adam eventually catches up with the young child, and they both go to the space shuttle with the intention of hiding inside. But before Adam can go inside, one of Taxon's women shoots him in the leg with an arrow. He enters the spaceship with the boys and Jake's assistance. As the youngster informs them that Adam must remove the poisoned arrow, he is already gradually losing consciousness. Taxon's supporters are told to leave by the queen, who appears outside with her soldiers. They initially object, saying that it is very okay for women to murder males. However, they grudgingly go when Sumeru declares herself to be the queen and has authority over everything. The queen confronts the men in the space shuttle after they have left. 
The youngster informs her that he would die since the temple snake bit him. Adam raises a weapon to attack her, but she stops him when she threatens to murder him, so he reluctantly puts it down. After extracting the arrow, she grabs an antivenom and injects it into Adam, saving his life and providing him with immediate relief. Will, in the meantime, is outside calling out for his dog while searching for it. He is startled when Dove appears out of nowhere since he believes she might have been hit by a snake. The warrior of Taxon. He accuses Dog of being the reason of her reprimands for visiting the temple zone. She advises him to avoid the settlement and the temple guards. As Sumuru's bodyguard, he rarely gets to see her, yet he claims he misses her. Dove reveals that Taxon would have fed Sumuru to the snake mother if it weren't for the queen, and that she is able to defend him as his bodyguard. She swears to always defend him, but if it occurs to him again, they will remove her and she won't be able to protect him. Adam and Jake are then brought to the queen's mansion by her guards, where they meet up in the presence of medical guards. Jake explains that the reason earthquakes occur so frequently is because the planet is dying, as per his previous geoscan findings. He informs him that there is only a maximum of two months left on Earth before it completely self-destructs. They speculate that it's also home to the gene virus that rendered the ladies on their planet infertile. Curious, Will observes Adam and Jake as they use a small device to scan themselves for any signs of the infection. Then there's another earthquake the magnitude is 6.9 this time, which is higher than previously. Will clarifies that it was only the holy serpent wandering about, as it always does. He then inquires about the gadget and whether it functions similarly to an oracle. Adam demonstrates it to him by scanning him and explains that it lets him know whether he has a hidden medical condition. Thankfully, he doesn't. Adam is later brought to the queen's chamber to be questioned by the queen's guards. He makes his introduction and states that he is an earthling. Additionally, he asserts that because their government dispatched certain citizens on a terraforming mission a millennium ago, the inhabitants of Antares are descended from Earth. For the first 50 years, they published their findings on a regular basis. After that, they stopped communicating. They merely attempt to learn a little bit about their people in Antares because the Earth also saw a terrible battle. The Queen is surprised to hear all of this, but she still accepts the allegations because Earth is mentioned in their tradition. The subject of snake cult comes up as the two go on their conversation. According to Queen Simuru, the people turned to religion as a result of the frequent earthquakes, which is how Taxon came to be in control. She was raised in an aristocratic family and believed she should be queen, but the people didn't agree, so she started a cult with the goal of becoming queen herself one day. Regarding the enormous cobra that materialized out of nowhere, Taxon says they had to occasionally make a sacrifice in order to put an end to the tremors. Startled by the discoveries, Adam warns that everyone needs to leave the earth right away since it is dying. The queen is still unwilling to hear from a man. Rather, she proceeds to state that the males carried the darkness's curse. Adam is then led by the queen to a mine where all of the men are forced to work as slaves. She reveals that many people were slain when the men set off a massive flash of light long ago. Since then, women have ruled the country, and it is now entirely acceptable for them to execute males who are discovered to be disobedient. The queen claims that men are kept as slaves either as procreation or as sacrifices. Adam finds the website repulsive, but when he tries to voice his opinions, he gets physically assaulted and dragged away. Unfortunately, Taxon's gang attacks the guards as they return with him to the queen's home. Adam is captured when the infamous cult members kill the queen's guards. Sadly, Dove is also one of the casualties. As she draws her last breath, she laments not being there to defend him earlier and to inform Sumeru of what had transpired. She does her best to assist, but it's too late. Adam is brought to Taxon's rooms by Taxon's troops, where the Serpent Queen invites him to join their cause. As she attempts to entice him to join her squad, she gives him a passionate kiss. But Adam declines right away. The two get into a fight over it, but before Adam is wounded, Queen Sumeru and Jake intervene as they pose as guards. Taxon tries to defend herself, but the queen leaves after throwing a single punch that knocks her out. Jake reassures Will that they will search for Dove later, although he is still unhappy that he hasn't found her. 
The astronauts talk about the condition of the planet as they exit the planet through the tunnels, and Jake admits that they don't have as much time as he had previously thought. According to his most recent projections, Antares might explode in a few days. As she hears them talking, the queen takes out her jewelry, which has been passed down from queen to queen. It's a fragment of a spacecraft from the burn zone, the location of the earthly spaceship's landing 1,000 years ago. The astronauts are thrilled to hear this since it means they can return to Earth if they can find a way to get there and get the spacecraft going again. After the Queen grants their request for assistance, they set out toward the burn zone together. They avoid numerous of Taxon's cult members along the tunnel. They follow Will, who knows another way out, but they are unable to squeeze through, so they choose a different route that passes through a prison. It is crammed with male slaves. When Jake notices this, he tries to set them free, but Sumeru stops him. When the warriors of the Taxons suddenly show up and attack them, Jake is able to unlock the men's jail. As Sumeru gives the instructions for the men to leave the prison, Adam uses his blaster to shoot down the tunnel, forcing it to fall on the snakeheads. When the astronauts eventually make it outside, Queen Sumeru informs them that there are still several kilometers ahead of them because the burn zone is hidden behind a big hill. Despite the difficulties and the fact that Taxon and her warriors are pursuing them, Jake and Adam choose to go on with their adventure. The group is struggling to climb the slope when a strong earthquake strikes, sending everyone flying down the hillside. This leads Jake to conclude that the planet's approaching apocalypse is getting closer. Soon after, Adam makes an attempt to persuade the Queen to accompany them, claiming that Earth is a far safer place. She gently declines, stating that she serves the people rather than ruling them. After some time, the crew finds a man's skeleton remains. Jake examines them and discovers that the man passed away in Antares around 900 years ago, the year that humans first arrived there. Upon closer examination, he also discovers that the majority of the guys died as a result of a solar blast that occurred nearby. When the queen hears this, she recognizes that it is the same burst of light that their ancestors saw ages before. Jake came to the conclusion that although most of the colonists were women, they had blown themselves up and had just reconstructed civilization to suit their wants. They then proceed up the hill after seeing Taxon and her soldiers are nearby after one of the queen's guards is shot to death. Will is covered in sand and boulders after another earthquake, but they quickly bring him to safety. Adam uses his equipment to scan him, and Will requests that the queen be checked as well. This confirms that neither of them has any undiagnosed ailments. When the queen inquires as to what kind of condition they are seeking, Adam divulges their actual goal for coming to Antares. He begs for her assistance, explaining that she and her people represent Earth's final hope. Samura just advises that they locate the ship first. The crew soon finds itself in the burn zone, which resembles a massive space dome. Soon after, Taxon and her soldiers quickly enter. Adam and Samuru will go to another compartment where they discover a spaceship, while Jake and Little will attempt to restart the engine from the control room. Samuru is informed by Adam that while she and her people have no chance on Antares, they do have a chance on Earth. Jake then informs Adam that the cruiser is prepared to be powered on and notifies the Queen of the ship's previous quantum reactor explosion, which the locals refer to as the Light of Death. Nobody was at fault. It was all an accident brought on by an odd response to the planet. The men were innocent because the Light was created by natural means. Because of this, their religion, which for millennia claimed that men are dangerous and evil, was founded on falsehoods. The news shocks the Queen and the astronaut keeps running the cruiser because they don't have much longer. However, because of how old the engine is, it heats up quickly and could blow up. Adam then instructs Jake to turn it off and restart it later. Taxon suddenly gives the order for her men to charge. Thus, a bloody conflict breaks out between the two factions, but Adam uses his superior weaponry to dispatch the majority of the cult members. Taxon issues a challenge to a one-on-one -on -one fight, which the Queen accepts. Although they are tied at initially, Sumeru quickly gains the upper hand because to her formidable combat abilities. Taxon gets the idea that she's going to lose, so she takes out her knife and lunges at Sumeru, who stops her in her tracks. Subsequently, Sumeru propels her into a generator, causing electrocution. 
Nevertheless, the tenacious Taxon refuses to quit up. She throws her dagger at the queen, but Adam shoots her, killing her for good. Jake struggles mightily until relighting the cruiser, at which point it's prepared for flight. The spacecraft soon lifts off and soars over the skies. The enormous spacecraft is viewed with amazement by all of the Antares population, including the men, the queen's warriors, and even the devotees of Taxon. Sumeru also chooses to travel to Earth after coming to terms with the fact that the men on Antares are innocent and that the planet is dying. Adam feels awful for them, seeing them without their leader. He proposes that since the ship can accommodate 500 passengers, they should bring everyone inside. Sumeru and Adam are willing to take a chance despite Jake's warnings that strong earthquakes could destroy the boat. Jake is forced to follow the instructions and begins descending the spaceship. When they eventually surface, the inhabitants are astounded to see the big ship that they had previously referred to as the Burn Zone. Telling them their planet is going to end and forcing them to travel to a new, distant world, Queen Sumeru gives the command for everyone to enter. There will be a large population on their new Earth, with no differences in terms of gender, color, or religion. As soon as they hear this, the passengers get thrilled and board the ship. But before Jake and Adam can steer the spacecraft off the planet, a powerful earthquake shakes the entire population. They see the enormous serpent attacking one of the ship's propellers when they turn to face the outside world. Adam gives Jake the instruction to turn the propeller on full throttle since there is not much more time. Jake does, and the flames generated by the propeller causes the serpent to back off. Finally, the spacecraft lifts off, leaving Terra's planet behind forever. Afterwards, Little Wool receives his lost puppy from a woman who walks into the control room. The dog was barking wildly when the woman saw it on the ground, so she decided to keep it for the owner. The film closes with them playing with a puppy as the spacecraft takes off for Earth.